This is what my finished lighting looks like. Most of what you see here are just extra lights that I've created using the same workflow that you saw in the last lesson. I have also added some depth of field using the Pixar camera settings node, along with some subtle atmosphere using Pixar volume. Since this is not the focus of the course, I will not go into much detail about those. However, you can take a look at this setup more closely in the provided course files. While we could do a lot more to improve the lighting, let's take a look at some of the common problems you will come across in a production environment. While I'm generally happy with the lighting, I notice that there is a black patch inside the treehouse that refuses to go away even if I add specific lights to try and lift the blacks. I know from experience that this is usually caused by geometry with flipped normals. And even though you can use the reverse normals node in Katana to flip the geometry normals, in this case, I want to edit the material to make it a double-sided material. Let's create a backdrop called Material Overrides. Next, let's create a Network Material Edit node. Connect this node to the node graph and set the edit flag on it. I want to edit the geometry inside the treehouse, but I don't want to spend the extra time searching for it. Click on the eyedropper icon in the monitor tab. This will enable a pixel probe, which you can then move into the position of the area you wish to sample. You can see that along with the pixel values in the area, it has also provided with the information about the shader geometry. Click on the grey circular arrow and choose Select in Scene Graph. And as you can see, it has selected the treehouse interior shape. I use this workflow often to find geometry that I want to edit, and it is often a lot more efficient than just searching the scene graph for the geometry. Atana has seen a lot of developments since version 4 to make it much easier and more interactive to pick specific areas of a geometry to work on. And one of the many improvements in this aspect is the monitor layer. The monitor layer overlays the rendered image directly in the viewer. Click on the cube with the mouse pointer to enable image-based selection. Alternatively, you can use the I key while hovering over the viewer to toggle this on and off. Or you can hold the I key to temporarily enable it but I prefer to just toggle it on and off as needed. And we can now use the image-based selection tools to select geometry directly within the viewer. And similar to the eyedropper tool in the monitor tab, you can select any geometry from the rendered image without expanding any of the scene graph locations, making it much easier to work with complex environments. And as you can see, we now have a much better visual representation of the shape and size of each geometry part, which the eyedropper tool cannot provide. Click on a geometry we want to select and press Ctrl E on the keyboard. And it expands and selects just the geometry we selected using the image base selection tool. And we are also able to identify and quickly navigate even complex geometry like fur, which the eyedropper tool would not be as effective at. Now that we know which geometry must be edited, I'll middle click and drag this into the network material edit nodes parameter that says material location to edit. Expand the Parameters tab and you can see all the promoted parameters that we have available to us. Not only do we have access to the parameters, if we step inside the Network Material Edit node, you can see that we have access to the original material graph, which we have full control over. This can be used to make subtle changes in lighting, like adding a color correct node to adjust the saturation of a texture, for example. But in this case, we don't need to make any changes to the node graph. Step outside the Network Material Edit node. And let's open the advanced tab in the diffuse page. Enable the double sided checkbox. I'm going to launch another preview render, but this time I just want to render a small region to see if the material override work. While holding the shift key, I'll draw a small region around this area using the right mouse button. Now launch a preview render. And as you can see, just that area is now rendered, saving us a lot of time. You can disable the region of interest at any time from the monitor tab here, and it works as expected. Next, Let's look at how we can override upstream lights. I'll include the light location in the live render preview and launch a live render. Let's assume we have received feedback to change the color of the light coming from inside the treehouse. We don't really want to modify any of the existing gaffer 3 nodes as this is a destructive workflow. Press tab and create a new gaffer 3 node. Set the edit flag on it. If I want to edit any of the existing lights, I first need to be able to access the parameters of the light in the new Gaffer 3 node. Click on the cogwheel icon and choose Show Incoming Scene. It shows me just three lights. What happened to the interior key lights and the rest of the lights? Notice that we are editing the light location specified here. If we expand the scene graph location, we just have those three lights below it. I'll now middle click and drag the LDEV rig location instead. We now have all the lights visible in the new Gaffer 3 node. Next, right click on Key from Treehouse 
and choose Adopt for editing. This light can now be edited as usual. I'll disable the color temperature checkbox and make this a purple color just to make it obvious. You can use this workflow to edit any existing lights without affecting any of the original work. I'll delete this CAFA 3 node as I do not want to keep this change. All that is left to do now is save the render to disk. To save a render directly to disk, you need to use a render node. Press tab and create a render node. Set the edit flag on it. If you look at the primary output, which is the beauty image, you can see that this is being saved to a temp directory and it looks like we are not able to change this. This is because we haven't defined any locations for saving the outputs to. Press tab and create a render output defined node. Connect it right above the render node and set the edit flag on it. Change the location type to file. Expand the location settings and browse to a directory you want to save this to. I'll call this render.exr. If we set the edit flag on the render node, you can see that the file path is now set to the one we specified. All that's left to do is now to launch a disk render. Right click on the render node and choose disk render. As the interactive render filters are ignored during a disk render, we should now be able to save this image to disk using the render quality settings specified here. You should also be able to track the progress of your render in the render log. That brings us to the end of this course. I hope you enjoyed learning some of the workflows in Katana and I recommend that you take a look at the example projects included with Katana, which can be accessed from the help menu. With the foundations you learned in this course, you should now be comfortable enough to dive into some of the intermediate and advanced aspects of Katana.